It's so much easier to be a pessimist. You can't be let down if you don't get your hopes up. You can't fail if you don't try. You look weak and naive when you think everything's roses and butterflies. But there are roses and butterflies. Damn it. Birdie. Birdie. Hi, bird. Hi. Hi, birdie. So, taking in good news seems like something that would be really good for me because there's all this negativity going around, it's really bad for your mental health, but there's the bad side of only taking in good news, which is you are denying the bad things that are happening in the world. You're being naive, you're shutting yourself in, and you're not knowing about suffering in the world, the problems of the world that we should probably know about so that we can fix or at least help the people who are hurt. So this isn't an anti-bad news video. This is just an exercise in mental health for a week, and then I'll go back to my regularly scheduled horror show. But hopefully with some skills for seeking out good news that I didn't have before. So now I gotta figure out what those skills are. All right, so how does one only take in good news? I'm gonna have to stop going to Twitter and delete it. I guess I'm gonna have to delete almost every app, Reddit, YouTube. You get a newsletter, Future Crunch, which is all good news, and that's great, but that's only occasionally. I'm gonna feel like I wanna read news more often. There's an app called Good News Network. Download that and um, drink it in. Just drink it in. Oops. I turned on notifications, I don't want notifications. Okay, I have found several good news sites, including Uplifting News subreddit, and I've got a tab group, all the good news sites. But when I've been coming across a good news story, the back of my mind's always like, yeah, but, and I try to find the counterbalance to the good news. Like maybe these firefighters saved this moose, but I bet a house burned down somewhere else in the world. Ugh! You know, I'm so trained to look for the negative equivalents of the good news story. Pretty sad. Hopefully by the end of the week we can um, nip that in the bud. Is it nip that in the bud? Is that the actual, or is it nip that in the butt? Well, here's a website, nip it in the bud versus nip it in the butt. They're definitely saying it's nip it in the bud. Unless you're a guard dog, don't nip anyone in the butt. Okay, I've been saying it right. A lot of these news stories are good news to me, but depending on where you fall on the political spectrum, they might not be good news. So the back of my mind's like, well, yeah, but a lot of people are gonna hate this. Good morning. Good morning. What you doing? Baking bread. I'm doing a new challenge in which I only take in good news. Didn't we do this before? No, I did a video about how to take in better news. Hours consuming useless and often later I learn bogus information. Not good, you guys. Not good. Not good. But I didn't do I didn't I do a see. challenge. For instance, do you know they're growing really delicious strawberries indoors in Japan? I think I have heard about these strawberries. They're testing hydrogen powered jet engines. They're successfully testing. It's a ways off, but someday maybe we planes will run on hydrogen instead of that'd earth poison. Great. Earth poison, that'd be great. That'll do. That'll do. <laughs> Can I talk more about my bread? Talk more about your bread. It smells really freaking good. I'm looking forward to eating it. Hello, editing Craig from the future here. I did feature this bread making moment in a previous video in which I vlogged the whole day, but without the good news discussion, because that was a different video and it wasn't about good news. But many of you requested the recipe of that video, which I neglected to provide. The link is down there. Oh my God, that's such good news. Back to your regularly scheduled good news video. So this has been friggin' great. I'm noticing how terrible my thought patterns have been just reading the news I learn on Twitter or in the headlines. It's just a constant barrage of all the things going wrong. And there are lots of things going wrong and we should pay attention to them, but there's so much going right. If you just pay attention to what's going wrong, you forget why you should enjoy life in the first place. Last night I woke up in the middle of the night, as I tend to do, and I just started reading the Future Crunch newsletter and I started reading all of the news apps that I downloaded. I have a whole spot right on my phone that's just good news apps. Goodable, uplifting news subreddit, lapis news, all good, 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 good news network, squirrel news, good news, another app called uplifting news, and then I have a direct line to my good news Twitter list. I learned there's a new Alzheimer's drug that's shown to slow memory decline. Experts are calling it the beginning of the end of Alzheimer's. The world's oldest animal, a tortoise, turned 190 today. BMW is working on the ability to turn bumps in the road into electricity charging while you drive. Super expensive and high end, but hey, it's still pretty cool. See, I'm always gotta have like a but. If there's good news, there's something bad about it. That's what most news is. But in general, I feel like it's so motivating when you see all this good news and you see all these people accomplishing something and you don't 
focus on the cons of what they're doing, it's motivating. It makes you want to do things. It makes it makes you feel like you can make a difference in the world, much more so than when you just try to take in everything that's happening and seek out controversy. There's a new technology to remove cancerous tumors without surgery. A grandma and a man she accidentally texted spent their seventh Thanksgiving together. See, people can get along. People do actually get along with each other. Infant mortality has gone way down in Bangladesh. Roads have become safer in the world's major cities. Wealth inequality has actually gone down for the first time since the 90s. See the knee in the back of your mind, you're like, yeah, but. You can always have that but no matter what. Just It's just nice to pay attention to the positive. All in all, I feel more optimistic. I feel like this is an exercise I need to practice all the time. It'll help me be more productive, motivate me to actually do things to make the world better because there are so many examples of things that actually work. You can actually do something. It might be small, a little bit better is a little bit better. It's just not newsworthy, so we don't read about it all the time. And we're left with the impression that things are always getting worse and there's nothing you can do. It's not true. It's so much easier to be a pessimist. You can't be let down if you don't get your hopes up. You can't fail if you don't try. You look weak and naive when you think everything's roses and butterflies. But there are roses and butterflies. Damn it. Cities around the world are installing artificial islands that help clear up waterways. I didn't know about this, but Baltimore was the first to try it and it was super successful, so they're expanding it. Apparently, floating islands absorb pollution. Abu Dhabi's single-use plastic policy has reduced plastic bags by half a million a day. It's reduction, it's increments, it's not all or nothing, which is hard to get excited about, I guess, but it's it's good. Guys, this is just such a good thing to do, to just actively seek out good news. You have to be active about it, otherwise, if you just don't do anything, all the bad stuff's gonna be thrown at you. In addition to being active about your input for your mental health, you can also manage your outgo by talking to someone who can help. And what better help than better help? Ha! Thank you, BetterHelp, for sponsoring this video. It can be nice to just talk to someone who can listen and provide good advice about whatever is going on. BetterHelp is a great place. It's much better than worse hurt. Do not try worse hurt. Also, punch in the face. They were not helpful. I don't know why I thought they might be. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 25,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. You can hear I'm kind of throaty today, so my range has issues. <laughs> To get started, you just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy, and they will match you with the right therapist and their network. And you can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable. Text, chat, phone call, video call, smoke signals, the, uh, tin can with rope attached if your therapist is next door, Morse code, fax, Pony Express, patterns in the sand on the beach if your therapist happens to be flying above in a helicopter or something. Okay, maybe not all of those, t but text, chat, video, and phone for sure. And you can message them anytime and schedule when it's convenient for you. And if your therapist isn't the right fit, you can switch at no cost to you. China did that and it worked out just great. My first therapist was not a great fit for me. I just requested a new one and then was assigned a new one. And I was like, really, really easy. Great. With BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism and quality that you can expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who's custom picked for you with more scheduling flexibility and at an affordable price. You can get 10% off your first month if you go to betterhelp.com slash wheezy waiter. That's betterhelp.com slash wheezy waiter. Linked down there. All right, let's move on to day four, which coincidentally will look like right now because I'm wearing the same thing, but it's not right now. Enjoy the graphic match. All right, here's the thing. A lot of these news sites and apps that I've been using for good news, they don't update that often, and a lot of them have the same stories. And I'm starting to feel like I'm kind of missing out on what's actually happening in the world. I have been just reading news less. I haven't been going to social media and I've been reading a book more often. I also watched Jonah Hill's documentary, Stutz, basically him interviewing his therapist. Documentary I've been meaning to watch, but I never did. Finally did it, maybe because I'm not just like scrolling all the time. Enjoyed it very much. But I do feel a little out of touch with what's happening in the world, and that's not a good feeling. I don't have to know what's going on all the time, but I don't know that it's necessarily a good thing to just avoid it either. Did read a good news story. World's oldest pen pals turn 100 after 84 years of transatlantic letters. Now they're meeting on Zoom. This couple of people, they're just friends. They never fell in love, they said. Had been pen pals since they were 16 years old. Through the war, they still were pen pals. They just randomly became friends from across the world and stayed friends. And they're both 100 years old. Wow, is that the secret? You get a right to a stranger? But in general, I think there's got to be a better way. I love that these good news places exist, the newsletter is good, but I gotta find a happy medium where I can take in what's happening in the world without getting drawn in to 
the negativity that swirls around it. It's impossible to avoid negativity and we shouldn't. It's a part of life and it's something that motivates people to get things done. Going extremely in the other direction is helping me, I think, to balance it out when I go back. But I gotta find better sources for news that deliver it in a, I guess, less toxic way than something like Twitter. I could do some type of news reader. I've tried those in the past. They, they just really haven't caught on. Maybe I could try again, like Apple News or Google News, RSS feeds or something. <laughs> Here's some good news today. The Orion spacecraft is on its way home. It went around the moon and it's coming back. It's great, it's positive, things are working. It's so boring. It's unfortunate that good things happening the way they're supposed to doesn't make a good story. It's not something we seek out. We seek out the problems, we seek out the things that are wrong that need to be fixed. When I set out to just do good news, I'm trying to eliminate all the bad thoughts that come from seeing all the bad news. But I don't think that's what I really want is just a bunch of good news because it's kind of boring. <laughs> what I really want is a resolution of the bad news. All the ongoing bad things, I want those things to be fixed. That's the good news I'm looking for. And that's the good news you are not guaranteed and most often not going to get with our ongoing problems. You can find little bits of positivity or optimism within that, but often the way it's treated in social media is not optimistically. I guess what I'm looking for is optimism, not necessarily good news. And looking at all this good news has helped me to become more optimistic, so it's a good exercise to check in on. But only good news? It's just never gonna work. What I'm saying is I don't have a solution. I just need to practice checking out good news every once in a while. Why do we seek bad news? Well, I googled it. We have a negativity bias. We evolved to be aware of threats. Threats get most of our attention. This is probably why stories don't work and are boring if there is no conflict in them. Stories that are only happy, where only good things happen, can be good, I guess. It's a rare thing. Most of the time, all the best stories are about overcoming a conflict, adversity, coming back from that a changed and ideally better person. Or they end horribly tragically, but then in that case, you hopefully have learned something from their tragedy. You come back from that a better person. The whole Joseph Campbell, uh, Hero of a Thousand Faces, or Dan Harmon Story Circle. A story is basically a person is in a comfort zone and then they want something or something's wrong. So they have to go out and get the thing and come back having changed. And that's a story. He believes that that's naturally what humans like in a story. I kind of believe that too. And ongoing, forever good things happening with no conflict is just not something I'm gonna be that interested in. And when I see the bad things happening, when I keep doom scrolling, I keep going back and looking at the train wreck, what I really want is a resolution that I'm not gonna get. And that is how negative news strings you along forever and leaves you in this state of negativity. Anyway, that's my thoughts right now. And I'm gonna go in before this camera gets too wet from the snow. I just came out here because it was beautiful and I instilled conflict. Is Craig too cold? Is the camera gonna break? Kept you interested. Today we're going to Kentucky. How many, how, nine hours? <sighs> I'm only taking in good news currently. Dad. I hear that. Any good news that I missed? Baker Mayfield, he was one and five with the Panthers, so they decided they're gonna go a different direction. Jimmy Garoppolo from San Francisco got hurt. This isn't good news. And Baker Mayfield, I think, is going to the Rams. How is this good news? Baker Mayfield's back in football. He was out for a week because he... I still haven't gone back to it. I, and I don't feel as out of touch as I did at first. I don't know why, I think maybe I just got over it. I will go back to reading regular news, I'm sure. I'm just prolonging it for a while because I'm kind of in a good place. I'm not really seeking out good news either from all those good news sources, I'm just not reading the news. But all in all, it's going good, I feel good, and I feel like I just have good perspective on the world and myself at this point. When I go back, I'm gonna try to go directly to news websites, maybe pick up the old regular newspaper, limit the social media as much as I can, but I do like posting dumb stuff on Twitter. That's fun too. I'm not gonna deny myself everything. And this has been good. I recommend it. 
There's a couple of other newsletters I've subscribed to, and uh, I'm gonna link to all those newsletters down there. Bring some good news into your life because ongoing things that are working the way they're supposed to, conflict-free, are happening all the time, everywhere, and you should remember that. But I don't mean to be insensitive about all the bad things happening too. We should also be aware of those. Just trying to preempt any comments that I can already see. So I'm just gonna sit here and in Enjoy good things that are happening while I'm on my family trip. Speaking of good news, China's grandfather is getting married tomorrow. People still get along and in fact fall in love when they're around 80 years old. I'll prove it. Family and friends, it's my great privilege to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Frank Crabtree.